Today I am so excited because I'm going to be sharing some really beginner friendly Dollar Tree Cricut projects. Hello and welcome. My name is Jennifer and this is a little bit of Common Crazy. If you see something that you like or learn something new, I hope you will hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you are returning, thank you so much. As always, I'm just grateful that you are here. I absolutely love using my Cricut and I'm excited to be able to share these projects with you. I'm grateful to say that Cricut is sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump right into it. Signs are one of the easiest things you can make using your Cricut. So Texas got hit with one of the worst storms or winter storms ever. And I am not a winter person to begin with, but that sealed the deal. So I am heading into spring with a sense of humor, or at least I'm trying to. And this sign hit the spot for me. I happened to see it online and knew that I could recreate it. And all I needed was some Dollar Tree products, paint, and my Cricut. This was a great sign from Valentine's Day that Dollar Tree carries because it already has the frame on there, but I needed to go ahead and remove all of the glitter that was on here. So I started off using my heat gun and scraping it off. This is one really great way because it heats up the adhesive that is holding on the glitter. It turns it from a solid back into a liquid and you can just scrape it off. Another way to do it is go in with Goo Gone and you can put it on, but you wanna be really generous with your Goo Gone. If you go in with too little, it won't work. I had this little bottle that came from Dollar Tree. I kind of have to dump it on. A spray bottle, honestly, would work so much better. I've also used sandpaper and just scraped it off. If you use the Goo Gone, after you get the glitter off, make sure you go in with some rubbing alcohol and wipe off the residue because oil and a water-based paint do not mix. After that, I painted the sign or the inside of the sign with some white paint. I gave it two coats of that and I left the frame itself in the natural wood color. I am using Waverly's chalk paint and white to paint it. While that was drying, I went ahead and I created the sign in design space and then I cut it out with my Cricut Explore Air 2. Now, I will have all of the things that I created linked in my description box. So if you want to remake any of these, you can have access to that as well if you have design space. This sign just makes me giggle. I think it's so funny, but what keeps it so beginner friendly is that I'm only using one color of vinyl in order to make it. So I went ahead, I got it cut out. I added the transfer tape right on top. I peeled that off and then I applied that onto my sign. After that, this is done. I absolutely love it. I think it is humorous and cute and funny, perfect for spring. Now just cross your fingers. I can actually keep some succulents alive because I tend to not be very good with plants, but we're hoping. So that's it. We're just hoping. Going along with the spring theme, I've always really loved this sign that I have seen, but I've always seen it really large and I wanted a smaller version of it. I felt like this Dollar Tree sign was like the perfect size for what I wanted. So I needed to remove the glitter in order to create the sign. First, I went in with a paint scraper and I scraped off any of the glitter that I could get loose to begin with. And then I went in with an abundance amount of Goo Gone in order to get the remaining glitter off that was still adhered. Now, I can't decide if I like this approach or not to get the glitter off. So if you have a better way of getting glitter off that does not damage a sign, let me know that in the comments below. I'm always looking for new ways to get rid of glitter because I like these signs, but the glitter is pesky. I just use some rubbing alcohol in order to remove that oily residue that the Goo Gone leaves behind. After that, I'm painting the sign with some Waverly chalk paint in white. This time I'm also painting the frame as well. I go in and I paint it with two coats of the white paint. Now, once it has completely dried, I go in and I'm wet distressing the frame to bring back some of that wood grain look that the frame has and give it more of like a whitewashed look because I didn't want the frame to completely disappear, but I did want to tone back and just kind of give it a little bit more. Luckily you can see what I'm talking about. I just wanted to tone it down a little bit and by painting it, I was able to create the look that I wanted. Wet distressing means that you are using water instead of sandpaper in order to pull some of the paint off and expose what is ever underneath. So using my Cricut, I cut out fresh cut flowers, stems, blossoms, and seeds. Again, sticking with one color of vinyl, I think makes it the easiest for a beginner project. I went ahead and I placed on my transfer tape. I 
did a quick little varnish on the front and the back. I always like to peel this upside down. I find that the easiest way to get it to stay onto the transfer tape. I go ahead and line it up where I want it using my Cricut scraper in order to varnish it onto the sign and then peel away the transfer tape. I absolutely love this. I think it is great. And whether you are using fresh flowers or fake flowers, I think it's such a cute little sign to display with them. Shirts are one of my favorite things that I make using my Cricut. So Dollar Tree does carry t-shirts and I fell in love with this green color that they have, that they didn't have my size. So I headed to Walmart and thankfully they did have one in the color that I wanted. Not only do they have these round neck t-shirts at Walmart, they also have some really fun colors in this V-neck and I picked up the pink one to use in a future project and I can't wait to do that. I knew that I wanted a spring colored shirt. So I'm using some pink iron on vinyl to do that. When working with iron on vinyl, you wanna make sure that you put the shiny side down. Also hit mirror image anytime you're working with iron on. After that, just go ahead and make it like you would any other project that you are doing. It cuts normally, it's fantastic. It's such an easy product to work with. When you go to weed it, the product almost feels like a really tough balloon. It's not sticky itself because the transfer tape is already part of it. That's the part that's a little tacky and sticky. The vinyl's not. It weeds really easy. Um, it just takes, I don't wanna call it even elbow grease because it's not elbow grease, but it is, you have to do a little bit of pulling. You just wanna make sure you use your tool. Other than that, it's so easy to do. Once I had it all weeded, it was time for me to apply it to my shirt. I love using my Easy Press too because it walks me through when I go to Cricut.com exactly what temperature I need. So I went to Cricut.com, I selected Easy Press, I scrolled down and found where it said Heat Guide and selected that. Now I'm in here and I'm telling them exactly what fabric I have and what material I'm using to iron on. Once I have that selected, it will tell me exactly what temperature I need it to be set on and for how long. It is so simple, I love it. You can use an iron if that's what you have, but the Easy Press just makes this even easier. So I preheat my fabric for just five seconds. That just helps wick away any extra moisture that might be in the fabric. I place my image on it and then the Easy Press on it for 30 seconds. Then I flip the fabric over, go for another 15 seconds. Once it cools, I can then peel the transfer tape off and this shirt is ready to go. I love this. I think it's just cute. It's funny. Feed me and tell me I'm pretty. I loved it so much and so did my daughter and this is how easy it is. She has never once made a t-shirt. This is her very first one and she decided to go ahead and make one as well. From start to finish, she did everything herself. I just made sure that she understood how to use everything but I was pretty much hands off and she got to roll with it. I thought this made such a cute and fun shirt. I absolutely love it. I would definitely pair it with a pair of jeans or denim shorts. My daughter's probably gonna wear it with a bright, fun pink skirt. Whatever you do, it's just an easy, fun shirt to wear. I love decorating my home with garland and using my Cricut makes it so easy. I love creating double garlands or double banners. And so to start off with, I'm gonna work with the word happy because I can use it for multiple holidays. So I'm using these wood rounds. I picked these up at Walmart. They're just over $2 for a pack of six of them. And I'm using iron on vinyl to do this. So I created the word happy in design space using again that iron on vinyl. I'm just cutting those out so that I can iron them on. I am using my Easy Press 2 to iron them on. Again, you can use a regular iron if you want to. The Easy Press 2 just makes it super easy. I just go to Cricut.com, put in what materials I'm using, and it tells me exactly what temperature and time. I absolutely love it. So I get those ironed on. These are permanent. They're going nowhere. And I can use the happy for happy birthday, happy 4th of July, happy Easter, happy new year. So many different things. This is not just for happy Easter. To attach them to the back, I first went ahead and marked the center of each of the circles, making sure that I lined them up with the center of each of the letters. And then I'm just using these medium sized clothespins. You can get these at Dollar Tree. And then I just hot glue the, those right on and that way they can just clip right to the piece of twine that you are using to hang them up. Super simple and easy. For the bunnies, I actually picked these up at Dollar Tree. They already came like this. And to add the Easter, I'm just using some Dollar Tree stickers. I just placed that right on to the bunnies themselves. Spelled out Easter, easy breezy, then happy Easter was done. I love this, super cute. 
didn't take much time at all. I love navies and greens and I really wanted to incorporate them into my spring and Easter decor. Using paper on your Cricut machine is one of the easiest products you can cut with. Not only that, it weeds super easily, especially if you use the Easy Grip mat, it just peels off like butter. I cut a total of nine of these bunnies, three and three coordinating different pattern floral papers. After that, I'm using these pom-poms that I picked up at Dollar Tree in order to create their tails. I'm using two pom-poms per tail and just some hot glue in order to attach that to the little bunny bottom. Once I have all of those done, I'm just punching holes in each of the years. This is a crocodile. It actually has two different size holes. I'm just using the regular size hole, so any hole punch that you have would work just fine for this. Just one hole in each ear, making sure that they are about the same space or same placement on each of the bunnies. Once you have all your holes, I just went in with some yarn in order to hang these. I did add a little piece of washi tape to make it really easy to thread these through. I went down or from the front side of the right ear and then up through the left ear on each of them. And that way the yarn would stay behind the bunnies once they're hanging. To go along with my bunny banner, I wanted to create a tassel banner. So I got the blue, pink, and white yarn all from Dollar Tree, but I did get the green one from Hobby Lobby. I did pay a little bit more, but I got quite a bit more yarn with that. Now to create tassels, I just take the yarn, I wrap it around my fingers 30 times, I slip it off, and then I cut the bottom, and then I wrap it around another piece which is going to be what I hang my yarn or hang my tassel with. I take another piece of yarn, wrap it around the tassel a couple times, then tie that off to create that tassel. Once I have all of my tassels on, I trim them out. Now you can just trim them by hand like you would like if you're giving a haircut, or you can go in and lay several of them out and use a rotary cutter. All of my tassels are about three inches long, if that helps you, whichever way is most comfortable for you to do it. I did a total of six of each color, so that would be 24 tassels. I absolutely love how these two garlands came, came together. They're just so perfect for spring and Easter. If you're looking for more beginner friendly projects, make sure you check out these videos. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.